Hey, welcome back to the CNET live stage at CES 2019. I'm Jason Heiner, and this is Bill Detweiler with Tech Republic, and it's become a tradition for us to close CNET's live coverage by cracking open popular tech products. And today, we're going to cut open the Google Home Hub and the Amazon Echo Show, too. So, Bill, let's get it started, right? Tell us about what we're going to do with the Google Home Hub. Yeah, you know, so these were two of the most popular smart home gadgets of the year. In fact, we just gave away one of the Echo shows here uh, live right. on the CNET stage a few moments ago. And so we always think it's a lot of fun to take these apart, to see the tech that's actually inside them, to make them run, and to find out, you know, if they do break, how can we repair them and how can we fix them and make them last a little longer, eliminate a little e-waste. So, and that's it's a right. lot of fun for us too. And now, if people are interested in seeing more of these, they can go to CNET's YouTube channel and right. find the whole Cracking Open uh, channel full of videos of us cracking open all kinds of stuff. That's right. So let's get started. Uh, this is the Google Home Hub. Now, I have you know, pre-cooked this a little bit, right? So it's just like a cooking show because <laughs> yes. it's not that exciting for everyone up here uh, to watch me take a heat gun and to heat the adhesive on the edge of the Echo Show 2 and melt uh, the adhesive in there. So I pre-cooked it a little bit. Uh, it also helps me not have to break the screen. It does happen sometimes when we damage these when we're cracking them open, but we try not to. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try and pry the screen off. Now, All right. with the Echo or with the um, Google uh, Home Hub here, the way you get into this device, like a lot of these new tablets and uh, phones, is you have to go through the front. And the front panels are held on with some really sticky adhesive in most cases. Very strong um, adhesive. And it's designed to prevent dust, water, um, other uh, substances from getting inside the device. It's also designed to provide a little bit of security to hold the parts together. Uh, but we're going to slowly work our way around this. Why don't you tell people what tool you're using here, Bill? Yeah, so when we first started doing this, we used everything from kitchen knives and razor blades. Uh, now we've gotten a little more sophisticated, uh, and we've got special screwdrivers. We've got these little metal uh, picks and tools here. We actually have these old school sort of plastic spudgers. These are new, but anyone in the old telecom it's industry will know. It's a great name for a tool. Yeah, this spudger. is what they used to use to put wires into old telecom boxes. So you can see that we have the screen detached from the front of the Google Home Hub. And that was pretty easy. It's usually not that easy in real life. <laughs> and we can see the adhesive. See, it's really sticky there. Yeah. You can also see, now if I were to just pull this off, I would liably break the screen. So I don't want to okay. do that. I mean, these uh, have Gorilla Glass on them, or they have really uh, strong glass. But still, you put enough pressure on them and you bend them enough and they will break. So we have a cable right here that we're going to need to detach. These are uh, th foldable or flexible foldable cables here. Now I haven't cracked this open before, so this is kind of all new for me while we're doing it. Cool. Um, we're going to try to do this without breaking. It looks like there's a catch here. Now sometimes I can use a tool. Other times uh, the best tool I have is my fingernail. Yeah. Uh, so we popped loose the, the latch and now we can separate uh, the, the screen here from the home hub. And it's, you know, this is designed if you break it, if you crack it, you can easily remove this and put this back on. You know, it, not for the average user per se, but it can be done. Um, with that, now we have one of my favorite parts of the cracking open, and that's to see how many screws are inside this thing. I mean, yes. I, I like mechanical connections, I like physical connections, but screws can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. Um, and there are quite a few screws in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. Okay. Luckily, I have a variety of screwdrivers that we can, we just have to figure out which one fits. This one's a little so small. Sometimes they're not just normal Phillips head or flat oh, screwdrivers, right? Oh, they're never regular so, screws. So why don't you talk a little bit about that, about how do people get these screwdrivers like the ones that, you're, that you have, where we'll turn if they want to do this so themselves, a, um, what's the better shot there? how can they you know, get the right tools, the right equipment to be able to do this at home? Right, so it, mostly the internet. I mean, sometimes you can find tools uh, at your local hardware store. Uh, these are Torx screwdrivers, so they're not really that difficult to find, but they are small, right? These are uh, T0s, T1s, T00s, and sometimes those can be a little 
uh, hard to find at your local uh, big box hardware retailers. So you usually have to find those online. Uh, but they're not, thanks to the internet, they're not hard to find. Like you can get them on Amazon or you can, oh, yeah, get, them you can get them on Amazon. You can get them from specialty dealers. I actually have a kit from some of our friends over at iFixit. Uh, they actually came on stage last year and helped me repair uh, an iPhone. Yes. So there are a lot of companies out there as the DIY repair market has grown. They've been able to, uh, it's created a market for these type of tools. And Great. one thing I do want to mention, you know, when I do this, um, I I'm often not wearing uh, sort of the safety gear that I would recommend people wear when they do it. I'm doing okay. it on stage. If I was doing this uh, really on one of my own devices, I'd wear a wrist strap that would give me some ESD protection. I would wear a uh, safety glasses perhaps. We'd make sure that uh, we were grounded so we wouldn't have any sparking, things like that. Here it's not too bad. I'm not worried about it. I just don't want to, if there's, the, the biggest security concern or um, safety concern is usually cutting yourself, eh, it's happened once or twice, um, <laughs> or you know, poking yourself, damaging uh, something like that, or damaging the component. All right, so let's see, we've got all the screws off of this piece of plastic here, I think. Let me see if I can, again, I haven't done this before, so it's kind of, I'm learning You're as I learning go. as you go. I mean, one of the good lessons, Bill, you've done a lot of these, we've been cracking things open since um, Xbox and iPod, in 2006 were some of the first things that we cracked open as well as the first iPhone in 2007. Uh, so w to crack these things open, one of the biggest people, biggest mistakes people make is they rush it. They don't have enough patience, right? They do. If it won't come, Ooh, they force, force it, right? That's right. So uh, I like to say you have the hands of a surgeon and a patience of a saint because it takes that really, you know, you have to be really kind of nimble with your hands. You have to kind of pull it a little bit here, pull it a little bit there and see where it's going to Maybe I missed give. my calling. That's right? what it was, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it does take a lot of patience. Um, you you want to make sure that you're not rushing it, especially if it's your device. If it's a $1,000 phone, an $800 phone, if it's a $200 phone, you don't want to make the problem worse. And I always recommend people, they ask me, how difficult is it to do at home? Should I do this at home? And I say, well, it depends on your level of technical expertise. If, if you're kind of a DIYer, if you feel like, it's something that you can tackle, then by all means, go for it. We should have the right to do that, and I encourage people to do it. If not, just take it to the manufacturer, send it back, spend the money, uh, and have it repaired there. All right, so we've been able to separate what appears to be the uh, main circuit board uh, inside the, uh, and some of the, the heat sinks here, perhaps, uh, uh, likely, inside the hub home, or the Google Home hub here. And then we can also get our first look at the uh, speaker ah, yes. that's inside the home hub. And so it look, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to see if I can uh, take off the circuit board because this okay. is really kind of cool. Um, this is one of the reasons I really enjoy taking these apart because, you know, a lot of the times the manufacturers don't tell you. I'll turn this around so we get a better shot with the camera. A lot of the times the manufacturers don't really tell you the circuits that are inside the devices. Sure. Sometimes they do if they want to, um, uh, if they really want to sort of, uh, talk about how good they are, but a lot of times they don't. And so I like to see they're working yes, with. I like to see what vendors they're working with. I like to see how much RAM devices have, how much storage they have, how much, because sometimes they'll just say, oh, it has um, two speakers, so it has Wi-Fi connectivity, and that's it. And I kind of want to know, well, how much RAM does this thing really have? How much storage does it really have? That's a good point. So that's a good reason to do this. Sometimes you want to do what we're doing here for repair, and sometimes you want to do it just to learn. That's uh, right. A lot of the times when we crack these things open, it's one, crack it open for the people that don't want to crack it open. People to crack it open first before somebody else wants to crack it open themselves and try it so they can learn from our, uh, from, from us getting inside the device. And then sometimes it's just to learn more about these devices themselves. And like you said, it can have a pretty big impact on a small company when you open this up and you feel like, realize like they're make this new startup or smaller company, chip maker, is making a chip for the Google Home Hub. Uh, right? Um, a lot of times you will go and look up using um, part numbers and things that are on some of these chips to figure out, you know, who manufactures this, uh, this part or that part or this component. 
Definitely. And, you know, one of the things that's really interesting is uh, as technology has been miniaturized and componentized, uh, manufa device manufacturers are able to put chips and they're able to put sensors into devices in a much more interesting way and in a much smaller space. And so it's really interesting to see what's inside these devices. Well, I mean, one of my favorite cracking open were, was the uh, pair of uh, the snap glasses, oh, uh, yes. and so they were really cool to see the kind of chips that were in there, and it was basically the same chips that are used for law enforcement body cameras, okay. which makes sense, right? In, sure. in essence, it's just a body camera, but it's on your face. All right, so we can separate the main system board here from this little piece of uh, plastic. Looks like there's some uh, contacts for the board here, probably a wire, uh, one of the uh, wireless antennas. Up here, you know, the Google uh, Home Hub does not have a camera on it, right? So it has a pair of uh, far field, what they call microphones that are inside of it. And then it also has an ambient light sensor. And we can see the circuit board for the ambient light sensor right on the back of this uh, piece of plastic here that holds the screen onto the uh, onto the base. So we're going to put that aside and now we're going to see if, oh good. Now this is really interesting on uh, circuit boards. A lot of times they have these almost always, they have these metal shields. These are uh, designed to protect the circuits from electromagnetic interference. And so we can pop those off usually. Sometimes they're soldered to the board. And what problems could electromagnetic interference cause with these it chips? It just cause the device to malfunction. It can cause the device itself, if it emits any type of RF signal, it can cause it, other devices nearby to malfunction. And so you don't, you know, all, uh, all devices like this are required, you know, through government regulations uh, to, be, to, to meet certain standards. And so this is one way that uh, they do that. Some so shielding, some basically, shielding. To, to reduce that. Yep. And so luckily, this is we can pop it off here. I'll try not to bend so the metal. You're, it's pretty this thin. Is where you're, you're being, so you're not forcing it. You're finding just where it's going to give. Yeah, we're trying here. It's, I could be a little bit more rough, but I don't want to. There we go. OK, so as we remove one of the shields, we'll see if this one will come off. This one might actually be soldered on. So that's the difference between this main one right here and then uh, these smaller shields. Yeah. Those are actually soldered to the board. So I'm not going to remove those because I'm afraid it would damage. Well, I know it will damage okay. uh, the circuit board itself. And I do like to put these back in working order uh, when I'm finished with them. Now, yes. I want to make sure I don't do this to destroy the devices. People are like, oh, you're cracking open a $1,000 phone. Yes, I am. But I'm trying to put it back together uh, in a working order. I'm trying to learn from it. I'm not trying to destroy it. So we don't, I don't cut these off. I'm not going to desolder them. There are companies that do that, but I'm not. I'm also going to remove this. This is a little uh, bit of uh, conductive material that helps with heat, to transfer heat away from the processor, the main sock, whatever this has in here, um, to the uh, EMF, EMFI shield, yeah. uh, EMI shield, and then uh, to the heat sink out here. Underneath that, we can see a bunch of chips, right? So you can see the main uh, processor or the main sock here, which is doing all the work. Yeah. Uh, you see a couple of Nanya chips over here, which are likely uh, RAM chips. Uh, looking at these, uh, I suspect, let me see the numbers. I think if I can make those out, those are 128 megabit um, uh, RAM chips. Okay. So that's mega uh, bit and not megabyte. Right, so it's uh, you divide everything by eight. So I think yeah, I can't get those off, but I believe there are another two underneath there, okay. so for a total of four of them. Okay. Um, and then you can see, I believe this is a. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't really see. Usually, that's the thing that we use a macro uh, lens for on these. Yeah. Um, I think the the wireless chip is actually under uh, here. That would make a lot of sense. Um, and then. That's kind of all there is on these things. It's amazing how many components that they can, that manufacturers can cram into such a small space. Um, I really find that, you know, fascinating and cool. Certainly. And, and this is the brains that helps make the speakers smart. Now, you and I have talked about this before. It's not really this that provides the intelligence for the speaker. It's the cloud. It's the right? cloud. It running uh, uh, much more powerful chips in right. data centers thousands right. of miles away, often. Right. And so here we have uh, the speaker and this and the plastic shell. Let's see, I think the bottom of this can come off. 
here. And we do this, like you said, Jason, we take these things apart uh, on CNET's uh, YouTube channel. You can yes. see them there. And we also, you can see photo uh, layouts of our cracking opens in the CNET magazine. Uh, yes. The latest issue, which is on a display here at CES 2019 in the booth, uh, has me with the uh, latest ring video doorbell. Yes, I remember that one well. All right, so we're going to take the bottom of this off. You ah, can see sometimes we can see even more yes. uh, circuit boards here. This is one of the boards uh, that has the uh, audio. Uh, yep. or uh, That's power, I'm sorry. The power. power jack right there. Oops. And you can also see um, a micro a, USB. Uh, yeah, USB connector. Now, that's not something that is user accessible, yeah. you know, but in the factory it would have been used to either uh, load software, do testing, things like that before they put the, um, before they put the base on. Um, there's you, not if you were to plug into that and plug it into like a Linux machine or something like that, yeah, you, you, would, you would probably need a, uh, an administrator password of some kind likely to, to actually access that. But, and, and there are, you know, again, people who are trying to learn about devices that will, will do stuff like that uh, and, and learn in the same way. They'll, they'll try to learn from the software the way that we're also learning from the hardware. Yeah, let's see if we can get these screws out of here. There we go. And we can get this other little board out. Ah, really cool. Look how tiny that board is. Uh-huh. Very and cool. And then, again, we can, the cable that was fed through this hole and connected to the uh, circuit board. Let's pull yep. this off. Ah, there we go. So we have the I.O. board here, the input-output board, as we would say, um, and the power, power board. And then we have the speaker right here. So let's see if we can get into the speaker. I think we still have a little bit of time. Yes. See if we can separate the white case. Right. And sometimes things go easily, right? This, this was one, easy. This is pretty easy as far yeah. as cracking opens go. Remember the uh, S9? Oh, yeah. That was not easy when we did the back of yes. it. Yes. We cracked that one, right? We yes. literally cracked it. We that literally one. cracked I, it open. I, I, I like to say that, you know, <laughs> I can use I can count on two hands in the number of times in the past, you know, now fourteen years that we've been doing this, where you broke a device to the point that it was unusable. And um, you know, of, of the hundreds of devices we've cracked open now. Um, most of them you've gotten back together oh, yeah. in working order. Now, occasionally you'll get it back together and then it's like something won't work and then you'll crack it, take it take apart, it apart back again. Don't you'll, you hate you'll that? You'll figure out what it is and then you you'll get it back You just hate it when together. you like put something back together and you left out a screw or when you break or out you the furniture it, it's from, like, and it's like, I had this screw left over and yeah. yeah, I put my dresser together or the bookshelf together and I have a screw left over. <laughs> you'll, you'll get a device done and you'll hand it to me and I'll go, uh, I'll come back and I'll be like, the car doesn't work. The, uh, the camera's the, the, not the, working. Yeah, the, yeah. There's no sound. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I figured when I put that ribbon cable back in, I was afraid that yeah. wasn't all, all the way flush or something. So you'll crack it back open, plug it in. But the point is, um, you know, you've uh, made a habit of getting these back together, and that, um, and then our, our team, our, our team of editors and journalists, they'll they'll test the device. That's right. And learn from it. Um, learn from the the actual behavior of the device to share tips and uh, and, and tutorials and, and reviews in some cases. So, um, with the audience. And, and we really wanted, we're going to do a lot more of that in the future. One of the things that we're working on um, right now, I don't know if it will come to fruition, um, there was a certain manufacturer here at, or here at um, CES 2019 that shows off some really cool televisions. One of the ones that rolls up into a really small box. And so ah. I think we're going to definitely try to put a call out to them, see if they'll give us one of them. So as part of the test, maybe they'll let us crack it open. Ah. I promise I'll send it back. Very cool. Well, I think that's it for the Google Home that, Hub. That's about it that's right now. I mean, she's there's go. not much left. You can see that uh, we have the speaker assembly right here. Yep. Um, and, you know, we still have the little piece of plastic. But, you know, this is the point where we would probably stop. Yep. Um, you, there, might be, there might be some screws that are down in there that we could take apart if we kind of um, had a little bit more time to spend on it. I'm not sure. Ah. You can actually take these speakers apart. But we also have another device That's that we want to tack crack I, open here. I think here. at this point we can probably... Uh, so we'll call this one done for now. We'll probably move on to the its competitor. That's right. Its biggest competitor in the market because a lot of these you know, were, were devices that were only speakers. And now with both of these devices, 
Um, they've added screens, and that's the big uh, thing. Of course, I've been holding on to this screen. It's still pretty impressive how um, how thin they've gotten these they things to be. So now Let's that we've got this, this out one, of the way, and we're going to bring in the Echo Show uh, too. I'll, I'll clean up a You'll little clean bit. Up a little bit. You, okay. you, you bring that one. Uh, you bring that one over, and we'll uh, we'll see what we can learn and compare these two. Now, this is the second generation of the Echo Show, and we just gave one away earlier, uh, about a half an hour ago, like I said, and I've never cracked this one open either, either so it'll be really cool for me to do that. Um, it might also be a little challenging. We might break something. Um, and it, it'll be interesting to see how it compares to last year's model. Now, last yes. year's model had the two speakers mounted at the bottom. Clearly, that doesn't appear to be the case with this one because the screen is pretty much edge to edge here. There's a black bezel around it, but the glass is edge to edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what we can find out about how we take this thing apart. Now, when I took this out of the box earlier, I noticed that there were these two uh, little uh, tabs right here. Yep. I'm not actually sure what they're for. Maybe okay. it's to latch it to something to add an accessory. I, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't have a chance. Like they you're work gonna, like you're screws. Gonna, you're gonna turn them and see what happens. Yeah, we're gonna right? turn them and see what happens. All right. Um, so we turn this. We're gonna turn. Oops. Looks like it turns the other way. And then you'll notice that this one has a much much larger screen than the Echo Ooh, Show does. They pop off. Than the Google Home Hub. All right. So those come off, and it appears that this that is a rubber easy. base. Okay. Um, so I suspect. Let's see what it's hiding underneath. We're gonna go ahead. Pull this off and lay this down. This will make it a little easier. Again, you, this Bill is, is Bill's being pretty gentle with these right. with this. So it's just not some forcing it. Just well, some that was easy here, too. So that was easy here. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there is any screws. There's no way for me to get into this. So you, I'm not sure whether I have to go through the glass. Huh? Actually, I, I think that there's a little trick to this. Ah. And so I was messing with it a little bit. I haven't cracked this open, but I was messing with it a little earlier. And so this is kind of cool. I think um, compared to the first generation one, yeah. this one is going to be a little easier. And so I think if we start here okay. along the edge, that's a better place to go. That's, um, all, that's a good point. You know, you start along wherever the sort of edges are of yes. things to see, will something and just pop open? Voila. Ah, so just so like now that, now we've got jump. a lot of screws. We have a lot of screws. <laughs> you know, I, I like f uh, physical uh, fasteners, like I said, screws, clips. Um, not things that are adhesive based because you can pretty easily remove them and then reattach them. But uh, I don't know, this seems like a little bit That's of an overkill here. Better, um, better limber up your wrists <laughs> for this one. And I don't have an electric screwdriver, so while we talk, I'm going to be unscrewing screws. All right. Um, now, what we can see right off the bat that is really cool, though, uh, we can see a design change. And that's one of the things that we really like to look at from yeah. generation to generation. So, unlike the first Echo show, which had the speakers mounted up here yeah. and here. This has them mounted in the back of the unit, mounted to the sides. We have these two speakers here, and then we have this passive driver here, actually, which just is going to help reverberate um, and help the sound uh, sort of move through the chamber and come out. So we're going to... All right, let's, let's see what kind of screws. Looks like we have a mix of large Phillips screws, yep, standard so Phillips easy. screws, so that's good. Um, and it may be some Torx screws back in there. And that's kind of, again, Do you have it's extra kind Phillips? of... I can make myself useful here. Okay, yeah, sure. We could, we could, we could go at this from two angles. Here, try this. I think right. this will fit. You want me to do that one? I think this one will fit down in there. It will indeed right. try to get those Torx right. screws we'll, out of there. We'll, we'll, we'll both... Um, oh, yeah. See oh, you're, you're giving me the... You're giving me the, the good job here. Just yeah, I'm going to try Torque and... screws, all right. So yeah, that's the only one there. This so, one, this is a pretty popular product. Um, you know, the, the first one, people have been asking for, for this, for them to put I a screen. I don't think there's screws there. Let's see what happens when we just remove these. I'm not going to. Okay. And we might try these here, too. All right. I got, I got one of those Torque screws all out. All right, great. Your, your trust was well founded. Yeah, now, you know, one of the big differences from this device, uh, bes besides uh, the larger screen than the Google Home Hub, the camera. This one has a camera in it versus the Home Hub. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which and is a good thing or a bad thing, depending yeah, on who you are. It, again, d yeah, depending on who you are, depending on what you want to do with the device, depending on where you're going to uh, use the device. Me, I'm still a little bit uh, wonky about having the device sitting on my kitchen counter. Yeah. I'm going to grab this uh, from you. Uh, with the camera sitting in it, actually, I'm going to give it back. It's a small When you have kids, you're definitely more uh, like you and I do. You're, you're definitely a little more sensitive to some of those privacy, conscious, those privacy right? issues. And so, and that's the thing to remember with a lot of these smart devices, right? Is that that data isn't just being collected on the device. You know, depending on the terms of service, it's being collected and shared uh, with the manufacturer of the device, possibly with third parties, depending on their terms of service. And so you do have to make a conscious decision about whether or not you want to share that device. And, you know, you're basing your trust on the transparency, on the reputation yeah. of the manufacturer about what they're going to do with the data and what you think the manufacturer's whoever buys the manufacturer might, right. uh, might do with that data. That's you know, right. they may be a great company, but they may not be around forever. So just keep that into consideration. And so, uh, you know, there was a long time for, that I resisted having an Amazon Echo in my house yep. uh, because I didn't necessarily want a speaker recording me all the time. Yeah, I have three of them in my house now. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> they wore you down. I, I love them. They, they, they you know, wore you down. Um, you know, and, and so that is a lot of, uh, you know, you do break that kind of resistance to it. I mean, I don't know if break is the right word. It's just the value prop was pretty good for me. Uh, and so I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. And I really like it now. And I find myself, I say this every year when I come to the show, is when I come into my hotel room and I check in, I want to wake up in the morning and ask it what the weather is. Ah. <laughs> and I can't do that. And I'm frustrated. All if right. You're so. staying at one, there is one hotel here that's in the process of putting Amazon Echo all in right. all of its rooms Ooh, for that very so reason. We're able to pop this little piece of plastic off here and see our first bit of circuitry Great. down Great. Inside, the, uh, inside the Amazon um, Echo Show 2 here. All Again, right. more screws in here. This is probably going to be one of those 20 screw devices. Um, and Man, they are... This is why you do have to have patience when you do this. These yeah. are the speaker. I'm assuming these are the speaker wires, speaker connectors the, that I'm detaching here that they're showing on the, the, the camera. They uh, wore you down to get the Echo Show, but I don't think they're going to wear you down with all these screws to not be able to get in this <laughs> machine. No, no, no. We'll take it apart. Uh, like I said, whatever we don't get uh, done today, we will actually uh, feature on uh, CNET. Uh, we'll actually probably, I'm going to do this uh, for one of the future episodes or issues of the magazine yep. uh, and a future episode of uh, cracking open so yeah, we whatever we don't do again, we'll do the whole thing again uh, on a little YouTube, bit later you can yep. find it and if you go and watch one of our videos on the YouTube channel you can also leave us some feedback in some of the comments and tell us something that you'd like us to crack open uh, because we're always looking for new stuff to crack open uh, we regularly crack open new stuff as well as sometimes even retro stuff so if there's yeah. retro stuff that uh, you know, you'd love to crack open. We've cracked open an Atari 2600. We've cracked open uh, an original IBM PS2. We've cracked, a, cracked open Couple all Amigas, kinds of stuff. Commodore, Amiga, yeah. Commodore, all kinds of things. And even some of new retro stuff, like the classic NES, That's right? right? That's right. Or the NES Classic. That was really fun because we were able to see that basically inside uh, this little box that uh, Nintendo was selling as the NES Classic was an emulator board. It was yes. a really cool little emulator board. Uh, appeared to be running a, a, a Linux distro in there, running all the ROMs for the games. That's and awesome. that's really neat. You can see that one on our YouTube channel as yep. well. That one's up there. So again, go to any of the videos on our YouTube channel and tell us uh, what you would like us to crack open. And uh, we will uh, definitely consider it and uh, potentially a, put it on the list. Yeah, send us a DM, send me a DM on Twitter. You can, yep. so you we're can, easily to find. You so. can find Bill on Twitter at, uh, at Bill Detweiler. You can find me at, at Jason Heiner. You can um, uh, find CNET, of course, at CNET, um, at Tech Republic as well. Um, so any of those, you can, uh-oh, we lost the screw. We'll That's that all right, one. we'll, we'll get, get that, that later. later. That happens too sometimes. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've spent, you know, how many hours over the years I've spent walking around trying to find screws. Um, <laughs> All right, so the first Where board we is out. Side. We've got one of the, uh, looks like USB connector here, uh, and we've got the power connector here. Uh, we've got, this is likely the power board that drives the speakers since it was connected to them. We haven't seen the guts uh, that run the actual inside. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep looking here. It looks like we've got a lot of screws Boy, here. I'm gonna go lot. ahead and take these off and see if we can't get this black plastic here All right. off while you... This is the big reveal, if we can get this thing, because this thing is a lot bigger. It is much larger, so we'll see how much bigger the actual circuit boards are 
when we get in there. And, um, you know, and, and the funny thing is, I suspect they're not much they're larger. They're about the same. That's what's really interesting. You don't need that much more tech, yeah. that much more space to do the kind of sense, to, to, to do the kind of sensing, to do the kind of uh, computations yeah. uh, on, on these devices that you once did. It's pretty, you know, you can condense those pretty chips minimal. down a pretty, spa, pretty small space. It's important, you know, one thing that's important to know that you mentioned Ooh, earlier, uh, Bill, is that you gotta remember the companies behind these, Amazon, and Google are two of the biggest, most important, most advanced cloud companies in the world. They're doing a lot of compute, um, a lot of uh, processing in the cloud. And of course, a lot of the intelligence for these devices actually comes from the cloud. So they don't have a lot of capability when they are disconnected no. from the internet. Interesting. You find something? No, Good. I no. found that, that, that that was interesting in the fact that uh, we're going to take these speakers out. Yeah, uh, I'm still trying to figure out a way to get this to separate from, uh, from the this. screen. Yeah, I wonder if it might be through the screen. We're gonna, you I'm gonna take might. off every screw in the back and see and what we, we can do. And we still might have to go through the and screen. I still might have to go back through the screen. And that may be the last thing we do here today to see I, how, see if we can it, get it. It uh, might take us our whole time. It might take to us the whole time there. there. But we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, screws off of the speaker here All right. because that's the one thing that I like to do first. I like to remove the screws first. I like to look for any type of snaps before I really start to mess with adhesive and the screen, unless yeah. I know I have to, because you, you just increase the danger of cracking the screen. And, and the problem with that is that it's hard to find replacement parts a lot of times, yeah. um, especially a couple years ago, it used to be really hard before companies like Apple started making it easier to take your phones into an Apple store to actually be repaired. Sure. Um, now you can do that. You used to not be able to do that. And you can see the speaker is kind of flopping around inside. I'll turn yeah. around so we can get a shot with the camera maybe. You see the speakers kind of flopping around in there, right? And yep. That's probably loose. not a good sign for the fact that these screws probably don't hold the uh, plastic here onto the, the front. They're just holding the speakers in place. Um, but we're going to keep going and see what we can. I'm going to remove right. these screws here and then we're going to see what we can do. We, we might be coming through the front. Yeah, we might be. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, well, but one yeah. of the cool, sorry, go ahead, Bill. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, one of the cool things, you know, CNET's mission has always been to help demystify um, technologies. And at first, that was involved computers, you know, and then eventually it was TVs, um, as TVs got more advanced, and smartphones. And now it's, it's more so devices like these, um, the smart speakers, uh, which are powered by a lot of AI and complicated algorithms and things on the back end but helping users understand um, what this technology is about, you know, what uh, they can learn so that they can put it to better use in their lives. You know, those are the kinds of questions uh, that CNET's always been about answering. And, and today, there's just always a new um, technology that is uh, worth demystifying. And this is one of the, uh, these speakers, these smart speakers, are one of the biggest, most important ones today. And one of the interesting thing is this battle between uh, Amazon Alexa and Google Home is really the biggest battleground of CES 2019. So it's, it's pretty fitting that we, um, that we end with this in our last segment here on the CNET stage because this really has been one of the biggest stories, maybe one of the biggest subtexts of this show is this, uh, this growing battleground between um, these two ecosystems, which are trying to approach this right. this problem in similar ways. All right, so, so you got I all think those. We've got those screws. all out. There's two more here, and then I think we can lift this whole thing out. Oh, good. And that sometimes happens. Uh, sometimes happens. I didn't see them. They were way uh, hidden were down in, in there. here. Okay. And there's like four more screws. So actually, I could have left all those screws in there, but that's all right. I mean, Nothing's more you, riveting than seeing me remove screws here I, from these devices. I, I've I seen know. you wrestle with these things for an hour, where you're like, I know that this comes loose. I can see that it jiggles a little, and there's just a screw somewhere uh, or some kind of catch that I'm missing. There uh, we go. Uh, uh. So we can remove this here. And there it is. And there it is. So this is the uh, speaker assembly here. Good job. Um, and 
the speakers are clearly stuck inside this, and there's, again, what do we have? A lot more screws. Oh, um, one, two, three, four, we'll, five, six. We're not doing we'll that. We'll save those for uh, later. No, 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 yeah, no, no, we'll no. definitely save um, those for what later. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to try to get in, and we're going to try to look at the circuit boards. Now, that's the cool part you can see yeah. uh, on the camera over my head. A massive, it looks like, heat sink here. Yeah. Um, so, and then tied to the circuit boards underneath. It's so a let's far go ahead. your circuit board, surprisingly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And let me give, uh, you might try that, see if sure. those, one, either one of those works. Sometimes these are uh, different size Torx screws, uh, I think, but that one might be too yeah, small. Yeah, it's too small, too small for, for that those. one. You might try that one right there, see if that one this works. Because I think this one's actually a little bit. Okay. Actually, that I'm, one's a little too big. <laughs> this one's just right. Sorry, you're going to have to get a, it's a, the a wrist It's the workout. Goldilocks screwdriver, yep. right? Wrists and fingers. I'll let you hold it there. So we're going to remove this heat shield, and that's interesting. So you can see the heat, sort of the way it dissipates the heat sink here, and then you can see the heat sink here. And that's something that's kind of, you know, a difference that's interesting to look at, at least uh, we find it interesting. I forgot there was one more part of this, that, that this job. I said you have the patience of a saint and the hands of a surgeon, but you also kind of have to be a hand model, too, <laughs> with this. So saint, surgeon, hand model, all, all three wrapped into one. Or at least have this. clean fingernails, right? <laughs> that's, that's usually what I try to do. It's a big part of it. All right. So we've got all the screws here off of the uh, Google or the uh, Echo Show 2, and we're going to pull this off. Uh -huh. and, all right. So now we do have a much larger circuit board. We so do. I was wrong, Surprise. right? Surprise. And we find that all, you know, that we, we learn things about these devices all the time when we take them apart. Sure. Just like that. We have ideas about what might be inside, but we don't know for sure until you take them apart. One That's of the why reasons we do we it. Do it. Um, and obviously with the camera inside this and some of the other uh, components, it probably needs a few more yeah. uh, uh, processors, chips on the board. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect okay. all these little cables. And then with this device, you can do, you can actually video conference with people, like something similar to like a FaceTime call, right? With this device, but not with That's right. the, the Google Home Hub. So Google Home Hub, interestingly, has, has um, focused a little more on privacy, uh, whereas this device is focusing a little more on additional functionality. Also remember that one of the big reasons that people wanted um, one of these devices, uh, that they said they wanted it, was to play YouTube videos. And on the first version of the Echo Show, you could play YouTube videos for a while, but then because of the uh, you know, ecosystem wars, uh, Google, um, stopped uh, them from doing it, stopped their ability to do it. So now you can watch YouTube videos on this, but through this device, you have to do it through the web browser. It reminds you of the old VHS beta yeah. wars, right? Yep. Yeah. Or the Ecosystem wars are never good for consumers, almost never, right? They're usually, um, they're usually hostile to consumers. We saw some good developments in that regard here, surprising developments at CES. Um, of Samsung working with Apple, right? iTunes is going to be on the Samsung TV. So you figure if those two companies can work together after their many legal battles, you know, maybe... Maybe there's hope maybe for there's us all. Hope dogs for, and cats. <laughs> maybe there's hope for us all, exactly. Or maybe there's at least hope that you might be able to play YouTube videos on your, on your Echo Show someday. Again. All right. So we've got the circuit board out, a much larger circuit. Let's, let's uh, compare that. So a wow. much larger circuit board here, uh, the Echo uh, Show 2 here, the second version of the Echo Show, and then the Google Home Hub. Let's pop off. But you, you see a similarity, too. The same yeah. orange uh, sort of uh, thermal paste here. It's thermal pads, not thermal paste yeah. anymore. You see the same shielding on the boards. We're going to go ahead and see if we can't pop some of these off. It does look like they can be removed. Maybe pop one or two as an yeah, example. Yeah, pop one or two as an example here. we're pretty much down to the end of this one, too. You, you, you got both of them accomplished in one segment uh, right. live on the stage. There we go. Take these little shields off. We can see some of the chips. And nice. I'm kind of interesting. Uh, to see this because okay. I haven't seen, like I said, I haven't seen inside here. I don't, and I haven't seen anyone else do this yet. Um, obviously, I don't have time on stage to look up all the chips that are inside sure. of it. But this is pretty you interesting. Can peel that off and yeah, see what we can, we can see. Can what, peel. There are some markings on there. Again, like you said, what we'll do is we'll take our own when in our um, uh, in our office in our studio um, back in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, you'll take the macro. Uh, lens on a camera and you'll take a real right. close-up of that and then you'll be able to really look and see some of the markings, letters, 
numbers right. on the chip, and that's how you figure out and that's how where we figure they might out what's from. inside it. That's how we figure out who's putting the components in it, um, what the specs, the real specs are, sometimes yeah. beyond what the manufacturers put up there. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. If you want to find out what's actually in here, we'll put this up on the site uh, at a later date after CES. And, uh, yeah, you can find it, and you can see more of them on the YouTube channel as well. Very good. Bill Detweiler, well done. Another one. Another successful cracking open. All right, that's all the time that we have, and that's the end of our live programming for CES 2019. We hope you had as much fun watching as we did covering the show this year. Even though we're signing off here, you can catch all of the videos and all of the reviews of the show of CES 2019 online. Just head over to CNAT.com. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.